Welcome to the Swim Swim Podcast. I'm today's host, Coleman Hodges, and joining us today, he is a Para Commonwealth Games champion, a Para World champion, and most recently, he is a two-time Paralympic champion from the 2024 Paris Olympic Games. Today, we're sitting down with Australia's Tim Hodge. Tim, thanks so much for joining us. How's it going today? Uh, it's going really good, thank you. Um, just taking a bit of a break off the back of Paris and, and uh, kind of reevaluating things, but yeah, having a, having a nice, nice break after Paris. This episode of the Swim Swam podcast is sponsored by Commit Swimming, Swim Swam's exclusive team management software partner. Since 2015, Commit has been providing coaches with swimming's leading workout management software. And now, Commit has team management software too. Commit wants to help you make the switch from Team Unify to a simpler, more powerful solution. Their onboarding and customer service team will walk you through every step of the way. Check them out at commitswimming.com to book your demo today. That's C O M M I T swimming. Yeah, I mean, you had a big games in Paris, and now you've gotten to, as you said, uh, we were talking off camera, just take some time, got to see see a lot of folks. Um, how has it been coming down off of the high of a Paralympic Games and uh, and just being home, seeing people you love, and and reevaluating, taking a break from the pool? Um, it's it's been a, a great experience coming back home. Uh, uh, we were lucky enough to have a, a welcome home celebration uh, after we, we got off the plane um, and we had a, a number of um, key figures there to, to welcome us home, to congratulate us and to, um, I guess, kind of relive some of the moments with us. Um, and, and since then, um, it's just been kind of celebrating Paris but also um, realising that uh, it, it was a good campaign, now it's over, now it's time to, to have a bit of a rest and, and look back on things before we uh, look forward to um, next year and, and the next cycle. And uh, has anything come up for you specifically as you've been looking back or as you've reflected? Um, has anything stood out to you or did anything maybe even surprise you? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, for me, uh, coming off the back of Tokyo, um, a, a lot of things really changed uh, for, for the better after Tokyo. Um, I started with my um, current coach and we were working really, really hard at um, improving on um, all the kind of the weak points of my racing uh, and just to, to look back and see how far I've come um, and uh, the improvements I've made, I guess, uh, leading into Paris uh, over the last three years. Um, it's just something that uh, I probably wouldn't believe it if you, you told me before Paris that it would happen. And um, it's it's something that I really treasure the rest of my life. Um, it's been a, an incredible journey um, and there's a lot of people who have helped me along the way and, and, and taken the, the time and the, the effort to, to help me um, achieve what I have. And so I guess now is about uh, really thanking them and a- acknowledging them for their support in uh, my performance. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit about who those people are as well as who you've just gotten to see and spend time with as, as you've, as you've been home and celebrated? Uh, well, first, first and foremost, I guess would be uh, my coach, uh, Misha Payne. He uh, has been um, the person working day in and day out with me um, from the start and uh, has been the, the biggest driving force behind uh, my uh, ability to, to compete at these games and to, to achieve what I did. Um, in addition to that would be my um, immediate uh, performance team, so uh, my physios, uh, my massage therapists, uh, uh, physical um, uh, uh, physical support team and, and um, my uh, gym instructor and uh I guess, uh, psychologist and, and physiologist as well, because it all really kind of comes together to um, help me perform at the end of the, at the day at the Paris Paralympics. Um, and I guess outside of that would be my extended support network, my family, my friends, um, uh, my even my like university lecturers and teachers and, and um, all those people who um, help in kind of the, the back end of things help 
me be able to uh, go to Paris and, and compete. Um, and so it, it, it really is as much their help, their support, their hard work that's helped me get to where I am as it, it has been my own. So you mentioned coming off the back of Tokyo Olympics in 2021. I think that was a, a weird time, a good time for reflection for a lot of athletes. Uh, we, we, you know, we were getting through this global pandemic. We had gotten through a postponed Olympics and Paralympics. And then, um, as you said, a lot changed for you. Um, so I kind of want to start our, our reflection of Paris um, there because it seemed like that was that was a significant moment for you. You were coming off of a Paralympic campaign in Tokyo that saw you win two silver medals, uh, one in the uh, 200 medley SM9 and one in the 4x100 medley relay, 34 points. Um, but just So first off, how are you feeling about that performance in Tokyo, and, and did you feel that a change was necessary moving forward? Um, after, after Tokyo, um, winning two silver medals uh, um, and particularly going into Tokyo with uh, a good shot at winning a, a gold medal as well, um, it, it made me um, realise, I guess, how much work it would take to win a gold medal. Um, it, it's all good being the fastest on paper, um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's who's the fastest on the day. Um, and so coming away with uh, two silver medals and being close close to those gold medals um, made me realise that it was going to take, um, I guess, a, a shift of focus, a, a shift of um, performance to to just get that little bit extra to get that gold medal. Um, and so coming off the back of Tokyo, I was, I was quite happy with my performance there, but I was still hungry for that gold medal. Um, so my, uh, my coach of the time actually ended up retiring from some coaching after Tokyo. And so that gave me um, a bit of a, a freedom of choice in how I go forwards. And so I ended up starting with my, my current coach, Misha Payne. Um, and um, uh, pretty early on, we identified, okay, off the back of Tokyo, this was what we wanted to improve on. These were the, the areas that I was a bit, bit lackluster in, in Tokyo. And uh, this is what it will take to uh, win a gold medal in Paris. And so, yeah, the last three years um, has been really about working to those goals, working to those uh, key points to make sure that when it came to Paris, uh, there was nothing left to chance, nothing, nothing left to speculation. Um, I'd be ready to go and I'd know how to win the gold medal. I'd, I'd have everyone behind me supporting me to win the gold medal. Um, and it was really just about swimming the, the best possible race on the day and um, fingers crossed standing on the medal dice at the end of it. Can you tell me some of those specifics or details of, of what you did work on with your coach? Uh, especially it was a shortened Olympic cycle, but three years is still kind of a long time to have that focus of this is going to, going to be the ultimate goal. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the the main kind of things I worked on with my coach were um, targeting the weak points in my race. So being a leg amputee, that was, I guess, underwater skills, um, um, turns, things like that, and also uh, my, my breaststroke leg specifically in, in my individual medley. Um being a leg amp, um, breaststroke was was not my favourite stroke by far. Um, so it was really the one that I had the most ground to make up. And so um, my coach and I really focused on getting those little one percenters, the speeding up the turns, speeding up the underwaters, things like that. And um, it kind of set the goal of in, in I guess, the field of potential amputees and, and cerebral palsy athletes, um, I wanted to try and have the, the best underwater out of the lot so that, I might not beat them on a straight sprint, but um, on the turns I could gain background or even even get more of a, a distance on them. Um, and so that was something that we really, really worked on leading forwards um, and uh, each year kind of just improving just a little bit over a little bit. Um, and uh, I guess coming off the back of Tokyo, having three years ahead of us um, to, to the Paris 2024 Paralympics, um, it... it gave me, um, I guess, the, the time to think and the time to focus on these little things. Um, I know for me, for example, 
um, having Tokyo delayed by one year um, was not a huge um, factor for me. It was, uh, I guess, my perspective was it was one more year to prepare, one extra year to to get ready. Um, and so uh, having three years to, to get everything right for the Paris Paralympics um, gave me a, a lot of confidence and um, my coach and I worked very, very hard, uh, worked very, very closely um, day in and day out on um, just, yeah, trying to each session be a little bit better than the, the session before. Hmm. And so did, were you happy with your progression, especially just on in, in terms of international competition uh, through 2022, 2023, and even leading into the Paralympics in 2024? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, yeah, leading into, I guess, 2022, um, uh, that was the year that I broke the uh, 200 individual medley world record for the, the first time um, and it was after a, a significant drop in, in personal best time um, that was kind of the, the first um, I guess sign of um, we were on the right track with focusing on the, the key technical aspects um, and so it, it really gave me a, um, a boost in um, uh, morale I guess a, a boost in confidence um, that uh, Paris 2024 was, was shaping up to be a, a good Paralympics for me. Um, and I guess coming off the back of 2022, um, progressing continually through 2023 as well, um, and not, not just in my individual medley, but um, in all my races, um, slowly whittling down on my PBs, um, showed that uh, overall as a, as a swimmer, um, things were improving my my. Um, focus, my strength, my skills were improving um, and it was all uh, shaping towards, a, um, a, I guess, a critical point um, that I, I had hoped after Tokyo that I, I'd be able to reach before um, the next Paralympic Games. Yeah. And so then in terms of just this year, um, so, you know, like 2024 and especially um, the, the few months before the Paralympics, um, were you feeling the nerves? Were you feeling the pressure of, of, you know, trying to go for a gold, still being one of the best in the world, if not the best in the world in, in your events, but then also, um, hopefully a little bit of a different sensation than, than maybe what you were feeling in Tokyo, knowing a little bit more what to expect out of a Paralympic games. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh... Having experienced Rio in 2016 um, as, as my first Games, and I guess that was my um, uh, moment to kind of cut my teeth on Paralympic swimming, um, it was uh, an incredible experience at that Games and it was uh, a lot more fun, I guess, um, than perhaps Tokyo or um, Paris. And leading into Tokyo, uh, having um, issues with COVID and, and things like that, for me, it was um, kind of a perspective of do the best that you can considering everything that's been going on. And I know there are a lot of athletes who, um, being a like a normal time, a normal leader, they could have won gold, silver, bronze, anything like that, um, who unfortunately didn't didn't perform that well and didn't win. And so for me, it was, yeah, about performing the, as best as I could in the situation. Um Whereas uh, coming off the back of Tokyo with some some performances that I was quite happy with, but still wanted to improve on um, going into Paris, having a, a full, pretty much a full lead up, it, it was um, a very much a, a performance mindset, performance attitude, and uh, especially in the last kind of six to twelve months, we were focusing on okay, what do we need to get right? What do we need to be prepared for when we get to the games? So that was obviously physical preparation through training and psychological preparation um, through um, a lot of mental exercises, a lot of um, uh, exploring my, my mindset at um, meet, meets leading up to um, the Paralympics. And so that um, in the final months leading up to uh, the Paris Paralympic Games, um, uh, my mindset was, was rock solid. Um, I wouldn't have any troubles with... Um, like standing behind the blocks and feeling doubts or um, not feeling confident or anything like that. It, we made sure that standing behind the blocks, I would know what I was doing. Um, I'd be able to 
shut out any distractions like a crowd or other athletes or, or things like that. Um, and, and going into Paris and, and competing in Paris, I was confident that everything we did, uh, everything we worked on leading up um, equipped me um, perfectly for, for competing at Paris um, and competing in front of the, the biggest crowd I've, I've ever had the opportunity to, to swim in front of. And, um, uh, like, for example, walking out in front of close to 20,000 people, all the screaming and cheering and that, and um, then having a like a French athlete walk out either before me or after me and see them go absolutely insane <laughs> for the for the athlete and still be able to keep my calm, keep my cool, focus on what I needed to focus on. Um, it, it really proved that I had the mental fortitude to, to be able to compete with the best of them and kind of reinforced the um, the feeling that I could um, win a gold medal at the Paralympic Games and, and still retain my um, gold medal in the uh, 200 individual medley from 2022 and 23. I did not, I have a, a bio of yours pulled up in front of me. I, I, I totally missed that you went to Rio as oh, okay. <laughs> as a 15 year old um i i mean that's that's so young to go to to have a paralympic experience and as you mentioned you know that was a very fun thing for you you swam five individual events um i'm wondering if you could just tell me a little bit more about that experience and and it in what way that was formative for you as an athlete and as a and just as a person, I guess, because again, it, when you're 15, I'm, I'm guessing you feel like a completely different person um, now, you know, being eight years later. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for me, Rio um, in 2016 was uh, very, very formative for um, my, my future swimming career. Um, uh, I hadn't expected to, to make that team, to be honest. Um, I, I'd made the World Championships team the previous year. Um, I was lucky enough to make that team um, to, to go to Glasgow. But uh, Rio was, um, I guess, icing on the cake at that moment. I'd, I'd been doing some good times the previous couple of years and i have been getting close to the, the qualifying times and, and starting to become internationally competitive. And going to Rio, um, it was uh, an incredible experience and, and it was, I guess, prefaced by my coach and um, all my support team at the time sitting down and going, okay, this is a perfect opportunity. Uh, like, I might not be at my peak physically or mentally, but it's a perfect opportunity to get the feel for the Paralympic Games um, because uh, they, on the Australian team, they always say there's, there's nothing like a Paralympic Games. Um, it's uh, just an incredible experience. It's bigger than any, any other event um, that we can compete in. Um, and it's always throwing curveballs we find there's nothing ever goes 100 percent smoothly so it's it's really about rolling with the punches and this was a good opportunity to learn that and to have some fun at the same time and not to be too worried about the outcome um because at the end of the day um like very 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 few swimmers can say they had a, an absolutely perfect career there's always some highs and lows and it's really how you deal with it um, that determines what kind of athlete you, you will become. And so for me, Rio was about having fun, experiencing the Paralympic Games, rolling with the punches and learning how to compete at a Paralympic Games. Um, and for, for me, it was just a, an incredible experience um, competing in, like you said, five individual events um, and also being uh, having the opportunity to compete in um, a relay as well, the mixed medley, uh, sorry, the, the medley relay, men's medley relay. Um, that was just a, an absolute incredible experience as well. It was really the icing on the cake for me, for my, my Rio Paralympic experience, uh, walking out in front of a Brazilian crowd of, I think it was about 10,000 people um, uh, with three other Aussie athletes beside me um, and raising our hands as we walked out and, and walking behind our lane um, and with me leading off with the backstroke leg uh, and having the opportunity to, to cheer on all my teammates towards the end and, uh, we ended up touching fourth, half a second behind the Brazilians who, who just got us on the on the last lap, um, and just hearing the the crowd um, cheering and going insane, hoping that their their Brazilian athlete would um, swim over us in the the end. And unfortunately, he did. But um, 
the experience um, is something I'll, I'll never forget. And I guess that kind of um, helped me here in Paris with all the crowds cheering and screaming and, and that. It um, gave me a, a feel for what it would be like at the Paralympic Games. And, and that's something that um, I, I've been fortunate enough to experience and something that I'll never forget, um, as, like a Paralympic crowd, is is always, always next level. And I guess the only thing better than your, your Paralympic crowd is a home crowd, um, which... I, I might get to experience in Brisbane 2032. It might be a bit of a, a stretch for the career, but no, it'll be it'll be really good. Is is uh, this is a little off topic, but is that something you think about that eight eight years ahead in your career, especially with a home Olympics on the horizon? Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, for me, uh, it's always about looking ahead at what my life might look like what I want to achieve. Um, and so um, having achieved a gold medal at the, the Paris Paralympics, um, looking forward for me, it'd be um, obviously LA 2028 and then seeing if I can go to um, Brisbane 2032. Um, I've had the, the opportunity to experience the home, home um, Commonwealth Games in, in uh, Gold Coast 2018, um, but not yet a, a Paralympic Games. Um, so. Brisbane 2032, I know, will be a, a great experience if, if I'm uh, able to get there. And it's, I guess, at the moment really about balancing all the different aspects of life. Um, so, for example, uni study for me and then um, like work or internships as well um, and obviously training. Um, at the moment, training um, was was the priority for the last cycle. So um, everything else kind of had to fit around it. And I guess as, as each cycle goes, it's re-evaluating where I'm standing, re re-evaluating what the ultimate goals are for, um, I guess, the next four years. And so at the moment, the ultimate goal is still swimming, still want to go to LA. And then after LA, we'll see maybe it's time to, to retire from swimming. Maybe it's time to keep going, get one more in the tank. Um, um, but, yeah, it's it's something that um, I guess it's, it's the carrot dangling on the, the end of the stick. So it's, it's something that I can use to get myself up those early mornings and, um, push myself through those hard sessions. Yeah. It, so it's exciting to hear that people are thinking that far in the future. I know a lot of the athletes I've spoken with recently will even, you know, will say like, oh yeah, I'm all in for LA. And uh, especially speaking with Australian athletes, it's it's cool to hear that they're even, they're thinking even further ahead than that. Uh, so we've got as you said, we've got some carrots dangling <laughs> to, 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 to keep everyone motivated and hungry. Um, but so get back on, t getting back on topic, uh, you, you get to Paris or you get to France, right? And I think you guys had um, a sizable staging camp as well. How do you feel like that experience went just the staging camp you're kind of actually getting into that zone of being at the, at the Paralympics and then ultimately getting to the Olympic Village as well. Um, yeah, staging staging was uh, an incredible experience in its own right. Um, it was, uh, I think, the, the good platform that we needed to, to launch into a, a, a great Paris campaign. We uh, stayed in a little town about an hour and a half south of Paris. Um, we've been there quite a few times before um, for, for staging camps, um, for like World Championships in Manchester um, and Commonwealth Games in Birmingham in, in previous years. And so um, we would already experienced um, kind of the hotel environment and the pool environment that was there. And so going back there um, for the Paris staging, um, it, was, it was purely about business Let, let's get down to business um uh, having the, the the facilities that we did there um so for example 50 meter indoor and outdoor pools and and a, a, a hotel um that was almost <laughs> almost all our own um it it really did give us the the environment we needed to um perfect uh, our skills put la some last minute touches on um and and really get in the mindset of, of competing at the games um uh, having the the obviously the staff there and the team around us um, was uh, superb. I guess um, the the staff were uh, available to help us with everything we needed to make sure that we were 
fit and ready and rearing to go. Um, and the overall camp itself was was an amazing experience and, and something that I I think I'll treasure just the opportunities I got to to spend some time, make some memories with my fellow teammates um, before the Paris Paralympic Games and, and to really um, get myself mentally prepped and ready for the Games. Mm. Uh, and then in terms of getting getting used to life in Paris um, for the Games, when was your first race? What day of the Games? Uh, my my first race was uh, the second day of the the Paralympic okay. schedule. So, did do you feel like you had enough time to adjust or or feel comfortable there? I mean, as as you said earlier, nothing's going to go perfect at, at a Paralympics. But do you feel like you were in a good spot physically and mentally on on that second day where you were getting ready to race? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we we arrived in the village uh, about four days before the the competition kicked off, and so it did give us a, a decent chance to um, get used to the village and have a look at all the the features and the the logistics of the village. Um, Paralympics Australia and, and Swimming Australia, the, the two governing bodies for us, they did a really really good job of preparing us for what we were would expect to see um, in terms of like travel times and distance from the building to key areas like the dining hall or the transport mall and things like that um, and also some some good kind of photos and things like that for um, the pool and the arena so we we knew very much what we were going into before we even got there um, and just to get there yeah four days before the comp started it gave us the opportunity to view the venue view the competition and um, kind of get a feel for it and go, wow, this is pretty cool. And then kind of, okay, back to business. We're ready to go. Um, whether it's a, a massive stadium or half a dozen seats, it, it doesn't really matter as long as there's a, a pool with water in it. And one of those lanes is ours. We'll, uh, we'll be ready to race. Perfect. That's all you need, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so then you get to race day, uh, day two, what was your first race? Uh, my first race was the uh, 400 freestyle S9. Shit, man, you swim it all. <laughs> um, th tell me about that. How is preparing for an event like the 400 freestyle um, when, again, maybe your focus is on other events? Um, does that, how does that impact your training or just even your mental prep? Um, knowing that, I, I mean, the 400 free is a very a different event than the 100 fly or the 200 IM? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's. I guess my, my coach really preached diversity and, and uh, um, uh, ability to do multiple events as, as a kind of a, a, a really good feature of a, an athlete. Um, for me, for example, obviously 200 IM main event, um, but a lot of the key parts of the 200 IM, the, the different legs of it, um, they would come from being able to do other events as well. So, for example, um, the 400 freestyle was valuable in, um, for example, the back end of my, my 200 IM when um, I'm feeling sore, I'm feeling tired, muscles are hurting. Um, being able to swim a, a good freestyle leg um, is, is key there, obviously, um, and the 400 freestyle um, assists with that aspect, having the, the endurance to do a 400 freestyle um, as, as one of the, the hardest events on the Paralympic program um, really does come in handy when you're looking at the, the 200 individual medley. Um, so for me, uh, I guess, looking at that race, I, I knew it was going to be probably my hardest physical race, um, being the longest longest distance. And so um, getting it kind of knocked out of the way as a uh, not a major event but a, a significant event um, was, was a good opportunity for me to get the feel for the competition get the feel for the pool, um, kind of uh, have a bit of a, uh, a, a mental study of what the feelings were and how the my mental um, space would um, uh, cope, I guess, going out and dealing with all the, the different situations. And so um, it was a, a great opportunity to test a few things mentally just for the to get ready for the games and uh, also kind of have a little bit of fun as well. Um, my, my coach um, has, has always had the perspective of um, 
working harder in training than you'll ever have to in racing so that when it comes to the race day, um, you can sit back and go, I've worked harder than this in training. I've worked harder um, in, in uh, back home when I'm tired and sore and uh, maybe a little bit fatigued and things like that. And so when it comes down to it, uh, I can swim that event at the Paralympic Games. Um, and so we, we worked really hard um, just on uh, kind of my all of my strokes in general leading up to it. So it would also lead into my, my 200 individual medley, um, but it would obviously um, assist my 400 free and um, on the day going into the event, um, it was it was really about executing my race plan as best as possible and, and seeing, I guess, the result of it. Um, it, it was a good, um, I guess, event to size up my competitors. So, um, yeah, I, I, I felt like my 400 free was, was quite a, a, a successful um, opening event. That's great to hear. And, uh, again, I don't think we see a lot of athletes who swim such a diversity of events, hundred fly, hundred back, 200 IM and 400 free. Uh, so that's, that's great to hear, but also great that it was a successful study, right? That you got, you got what you needed to get out of it. And then you could move on with the rest of your competition. Uh, where did the 200 IM fall in your competition list? Uh, 200 IM wasn't until day eight for me. So I, I had, um, I think all but one of my individual events um, before the like the 200 IM. Um, I think the only other event after that was um, my 100 fly. And so um, I, I, I guess it was kind of a, a build for me, um, starting off with the 400 freestyle. And then um, next event was the 100 breaststroke. And then I had, um, I think, a day or two break. And then it was the, the 4x100 mixed medley relay. Um, and so... Uh, it was a good build for me um, to to kind of go from one event that was not as significant and then another event that was a little bit more significant and then the relay was a, a good opportunity as a, as a team to come together and, and compete uh, uh, at our best and represent Australia. Um, and then by the time it, it reached the uh, my 200 IM, um, I guess I could say I was a bit of a, a practiced hand at competing at Paris. I'd, I'd had quite a few... Um, events and, and particularly finals under my belt and so I, I felt like it was a I guess a known quantity to some uh, to some extent and going into the event it was um, uh, all about doing what I'd done before um, practicing uh, what I practiced before and and just focusing on everything I'd, I'd worked on in the last three years and so um, going into the event it was not about win or lose. It was about doing my best, executing my race plan and and just leaving nothing in the pool, leaving nothing left. Um, and so it was, uh, I think, a quite six, a successful event. Um, I was lucky enough to get the, the Paralympic record in it. Um, and um, despite holding the world record and, and not quite doing a PB, uh, I was still extremely happy with, with the event and, and to come away with a gold medal as well. My, my first individual gold medal was uh, really uh, my life's goal. Um, uh, winning a Paralympic medal had been, um, I, I guess, uh, in my mind uh, for so long and to, to uh, achieve um, the, I guess, the pinnacle achievement of, of sport is something that is, I'll never forget really. I'll, I'll always remember that race and, and also remember everyone back home supporting me and, and their reaction to, to me winning a gold medal in the 200. Um, it, and it's something that I guess me and my coach have, have really, really worked hard towards. And it's a, an achievement for both of us, really. Um, my coach's hard work uh, outside of the water and, and my support team as well, it, it all kind of came together on the day in the water to, to, to give me the ability to win that gold medal. Um, and did it, did that achievement, you know, I, as you mentioned, mixed medley relay, you win your first Paralympic gold, uh, with, with team Australia and then 200 IM, you win your first individual Paralympic gold. Did those feel how you thought they would did did earning gold both individually and as a part of a relay 
you know, was it everything you thought it would be? Yeah, definitely everything I thought it would be, and and more really. Um, winning the the gold medal in the relay uh, before the the two hundred individual medley, um, I guess, kind of took a little bit of the the, the pressure off. I guess um, uh, I knew that obviously two hundred IMs, my best shot at winning a gold medal, and so kind of all the expectation. Um, if it wasn't for the relay, all the expectation would be on that two hundred IM, and so turning up that day, I, I, I guess if I didn't have the relay, I'd be thinking, okay, I really want this gold medal. I've, I've really got to win this gold medal. And so winning a gold medal in the relay, especially like an unexpected gold medal, we, we knew we had a shot at winning a medal. Uh, we knew it would be tough, uh, especially against the, the reigning uh, world record holders. It was something that was just – an absolutely incredible experience. In in the moment, it, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, especially the the last fifty meters where um, Alexa Leary um, swam home to to overtake um, the Netherlands uh, freestyle swimmer and and win a gold medal. It's something that was, uh, I guess, I, I didn't think I'd see it in my lifetime to to win a gold medal as part of an Australian relay because um, it it is really tough to win a relay simply because you've got four people who need to perform at their best uh, to give you a chance of winning that medal. And if one person is even a little bit off, that could be your gold medal chance or even your, your just your medal chance gone. And so um, all of us coming together on that night and, and watching Alexis swim home to win a gold medal, um, it, it's something I still kind of have a hard time believing. And, and I just remember standing behind the, the blocks as she touched the wall and just throwing my hands up in the air and, and, and just thinking, yes, we've done it. We've, we've, we've beat all the other teams. We've, we've won the Paralympic Games gold medal in the, the relay. And um, I was standing on the podium with, with uh, my fellow athletes, um, the, the five other athletes, because we, we had the heat swimmers involved as well, which was a really good touch from Paris. Um, it was an incredible experience. And, and singing the national anthem and seeing the, the Aussies um, the, the Aussie athletes up in the, the athlete stands and also the some Australian members in the crowd. Um, it's it's just uh, an incredible experience. It's something I'll always treasure. Um, and so I guess going on to the, the 200 individual medley, having already won the, the gold medal in the relay, um, I guess made me made me hungry for, for my first individual gold. Um, uh, but it also, um, I guess... There was less pressure on on have to win a gold medal. So um, yeah, the the real uh, sorry the the two hundred individual medley for me it was about I guess proving myself right or actually pro- proving myself wrong because as a as a kid I said to my parents uh, I'd never be good at anything um, uh, after my amputation and uh, it was something that really really struck my parents and they said no we'll, we'll find you something that you're good at we'll make sure that you you find something that you you enjoy um uh, sport or otherwise and so um that kind of started my journey and so the, the culmination of, of i guess my journey in the the 200 i am winning a gold medal there it it was the validation of a life's work i think um my, my career in swimming had all been leading to that point and it was just for me it was all about making sure i got it right trying to to not put the pressure on myself um and, and to to let the the swim handle itself and i remember my coach saying before my final um usually when he'd give me my race plan and say okay i want you to work on this this and this i want you to focus on this um he kind of went up to me and he said like we've we've done this three years day in day out you know what you're doing I know you know what you're doing. Um, it's all about just going out there, swimming your best race, and and whatever the result, being happy with yourself. And so that was something that was really profound for me, and I guess put me in the mindset that it's it's really let let the result show for itself. Um, all the work that we've done, all the the hard yards that I put in, and now is just about being confident in my own race plan and, and executing to the best of my ability. 
That is, that's a really great sentiment. And I, I love, thank you for that backstory, um, of, of proving yourself wrong. Uh, I mean, I'm, I can't imagine, um, an amputation being an easy process to go through. Um, I, if you're okay with it, I would love to dive a little more into that because as you said, at one point you didn't think you were going to be good at anything. Your parents are like, come on, no, we'll find you something. Um, how long did it take you to find swimming after, after that? Um, so for me, uh, cause I had my amputation when I was four and a half years old, uh, a through ankle amputation on my right leg. Um, uh, that initial, statement came uh, when I was sitting in bed uh, just after my operation. Um, uh, my leg was bandaged up. Um, I was in a wheelchair at the time because I was waiting for the, the swelling to go down so I could get my first prosthetic leg post, post amputation. Um, and yeah, I just felt, I guess, a bit helpless at the time. I didn't know where my life was going. Um, and so I, yeah, I said to my parents, I don't think I'll be good at anything now. And they were absolutely determined to, to find me something. And over the next couple of years, they put me into just about every sport imaginable. Um, I was doing a, a different sport each day of the week at one point, and uh, they, they put me into swimming, just kind of learning to swim very early um, when I was about five years old thereabouts. And I initially didn't like it. I hated going to swimming lessons. I only had one one lesson a week, so it was it wasn't that much. But I hated going to swimming, and I, I enjoyed my other sports. But swimming didn't really stand out for me initially. And uh, as I went on, um, I, I competed at my first swimming carnival when I was nine years old at my school swimming carnival, and I remember swimming the backstroke, fifty meter backstroke, and it. I remember thinking, because like you can't see anything or you can't see very much in the backstroke, uh, I remember thinking, where is everyone? I can't see any splashes. I can't see anything at all. I hope I'm winning, that kind of thing. And I remember touching the wall and looking up and I saw all my competitors were still swimming and I'd, I'd, won, uh, I'd got first at my school swimming carnival. And I thought, I really enjoy this. I like winning winning races. <laughs> and uh, I was lucky enough to... to keep going up the like the school levels and that. So I went to local area and then state and, and things like that. And um, uh, like with, with school swimming in Australia, it's uh, kind of a, either a top two or a top three, make it through and the rest get, get cut. And so I was continuing placing in the, the top three um, for a lot of my events. Um, I got through to state championships uh, and I was nine years old racing against 11, 12 year old, um, students, uh, 11, 12 year old kids. And, uh, unfortunately I was, I was knocked out at that stage. Um, but I remember coming out of that competition thinking, I, I really want to make it to, to nationals next year. Um, uh, nationals being the, the peak of swimming, peak of school swimming. I really want to make it. And I, I just, I'm ready to train and, and do whatever I need to do, um, for the next year. So I can get to nationals and, um, that really, I guess, ignited the fire in, in me for, for competitive swimming. And so um, as uh, I went up the levels of, in my squad um, over the next year or so, uh, uh, when they asked me, oh, can you do two sessions a week instead of one? Okay. Well, then found, I found a day where there was another sport and said, no, I can, I can give up that sport. And then swimming will go on that day. And then can you do three sessions? Okay. Another sport out the window. Can you do four? And another sport gone. And so um, eventually when I came around to it, I um, competed at the state championships and I, I ended up placing in the top three and swimming faster than a lot of the guys who had uh, beat me the, the previous year. And going to school nationals, I, I thought, yes, I'd, I'd achieve something significant and, and really, really had a fun time training and, and fun time competing. Um, and I, I really like this. I think I'll, I'll see if I can keep competing and keep doing more stuff. And uh, I learned about club swimming and I learned about Paralympic swimming um, around that time as well. And so I, I thought Paralympics is, is like obviously the pinnacle of, of para sport, para swimming. So I wanted to, to try and be become a Paralympian and try and win a gold medal. Um, and that that really kind of drove me to, to, to keep training, to, to do more sessions each week, to, to try and keep coming back year after year 
improving on my previous year's results and um, try and um, necessarily beat the people who might have beaten me the, the previous year um, and then learning about national records and, and Paralympic qualifying times and things like that gave me something tangible to, to shoot for, something I could um, look to and go, okay, I need to do under this time for my 50 freestyle, this time for my 100, this time for my 200 IM, things like that. And um, uh, obviously started to, to specialise in certain strokes up, up till that point. And um, it, it was, I guess, uh, the progression that, that made me more hungry to, to achieve and to, to perform. And my parents were, were really supportive each step of the way. And um, they even, they look back nowadays at, at what I said when I was young and, and think if, if only I could kind of go back and tell myself that like, this is what you'll do in the future. Um, it, it, it's something that I can almost like, I have to pinch myself now to, to kind of realize it. And, and even my parents, um, when they, they found out I would be born with a, an impairment with my um, having an issue with my right leg and my right hand. Um, at the time, they were told, oh, don't worry, he could go to the Paralympic Games. It's kind of a, a don't worry about it. It's, it's it'll, it'll be all good. It, um, and they kind of pinch themselves as well. I go, it's it just what are the chances? It, it's something that's kind of a bit funny now. So it's... Um, I guess validation that putting my mind to something and, and really enjoying something um, and having goals, uh, little steps along the way um, can really bring a, a dream to fruition. I think you said it all, Tim. <laughs> I mean that, um, thank you so much for sharing that insight and that's that story with us uh, because uh, I, that was that's that was great to hear, and and so cool to see that come full circle, um, as as recently as a few weeks ago, right? Um, for for you in Paris, so just congratulations on that. Um, that's really cool. Cheers, thank you, thanks so much. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, uh, once again, I think you said it all. I think that was a a great great ending point for us, but. Um, coming, coming back to full circle in this conversation, you're taking a break from swimming right now, just kind of sitting back, enjoying things outside the pool, reflecting, um, what do you see yourself for yourself? Um, just moving into the next few weeks and few months. Um, well, for me, uh, coming back off Paris, it would be, uh, catching up on a lot of uni work <laughs> that I'll miss during the trip. Um, uh, worked with my my uni lecturers and that beforehand to to set it up so that um, I, all the work I missed um, and all the assessments and that I'd be able to to do and, and catch up on once I got back. So that's kind of the main focus at the moment, and um, also um, doing a little bit of work here and there um, as as part of an internship, and um, I guess enjoying some of the the, the accolades and, and things like that 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 come with winning a Paralympic gold medal. Um, Cause I know that this could be the only moment in my life that I get to experience these things. Um, I, I could win another medal. I could go to the next Paralympics and not win a medal. Um, so yeah, at the moment it's very much about enjoying um, the, the, the fruits of my labor and um, realizing my achievements and celebrating it with, with my family back home. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.